Follow me. There's something I need to show you. But you have to promise not to run away. There's a new world coming. Would you mind tying that rope around my waist? And it's just around the bend. Promise to hold on tight. There's a new world coming. Wait, what's happening? This one's coming to an end. Come meet the others. There's a brand new morning. Jake, right on time. Miss Peregrine, delighted to meet you. He's invisible. Of course. We're what's known in common parlance as peculiar. It's a recessive gene carried down through families. Air, it's my peculiarity. Because our abilities don't fit in the outside world, we live in places like this. To keep us safe, we create a time loop. A loop preserves the last 24 hours. Reset the loop, and you can stay here forever. I knew you were one of us when you were born. It's time for you to learn what you can do. I'm just ordinary. No, you're not. You were born to protect us. From what? We call them hollows. For centuries, they've hunted us for our powers. I assure you, we are coming. Are Tim Burton fans. <laughs> Having one of the perks of the job is getting to see these movies ahead of time, and this is absolute vintage, magical, whimsical, gorgeous, scary Tim Burton. How did you come to be in this? Um, well, I uh, I read the script. It was about two, yeah, exactly two years ago, September 2014. And uh, I read the book as well. And whenever you have a book, it's incredibly useful just having all that information. And I sent out a tape. Uh, Tim liked it, I guess, because <laughs> he, uh, he wanted to meet me and uh, just chat with me. And so I went to his office. It was, uh, it was pretty nerve-wracking as well. I was late, which didn't help. And, uh, and, and he's a really nice guy. He's very kind of down-to-earth, surprisingly, considering how alien these worlds are that he creates, but he's a, he really makes you feel kind of just comfortable and gets rid of that pressure. So what was the meeting, what is his office like, first of all? Well, it's, um, it's very Tim Burton, actually, unsurprisingly. He's got kind of like statues of, uh, of Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas and weird kind of dolls and stuff, and this creepy looking garden, as you'd expect. As one would expect from a Tim Burton office, it's not Pottery Barn, I would imagine. But what was the meeting like? What, what did you guys talk about? Uh, well, we talked about his ideas, um, about the film, his kind of vision, and uh, he always had the book in his hand, and he was always referencing these pictures, which uh, it, was, uh, it was very kind of normal conversation. I didn't have any, we didn't do any scenes. He just wanted to kind of hear my thoughts and share his thoughts, so that when I did my next audition, I had uh, all the uh, information I needed. You fit in so seamlessly with this group, even though in the beginning your character lives in Florida, is so ordinary, or thinks he's so ordinary. How did you approach playing him? Well, you're right. He's, uh, he's probably, I mean, he's the most ordinary kid here, at least compared to the other ones. Um, so I guess kind of tapping into that feeling of being out of place and feeling kind of... Uh, just totally out of uh, out of your depth, and that's kind of something everyone can relate to in one way. We've all been in that position one way or another, 
And uh, yeah, just capturing that kind of normality, because he's the eyes and ears of the audience in this film. He needed to be kind of very natural and grounded. So that was, that was the most important thing for me. Now, Ava Green was saying that you guys shot in an actual house built in Antwerp with the gardens and the topiaries, and it was just a complete Tim Burton wonderland. So tell me about that. What was that like? Uh, well, she, uh, she was spot on there. It did, we were at this house, uh, it was called um, Torrenhof in Belgium. And that was the last couple of weeks of filming. It was scorching hot every day, so we just had this blazing sunlight, and they created this huge garden with like trees and the shapes of dragons and huge flowers. It, it, you kind of felt like you're in a fairy tale, like literally. It was bizarre. And then the house itself was like huge. It was kind of leaning over, it had spikes coming out of it. It didn't seem real. But then you can you actually walk into it and <laughs> go up the stairs. That must be so much cooler than working in front of green screen, which would have been the other option. It is. I mean, we had a we had a lot of both in this film. Uh, to what Tim's great at is kind of combining the two, the the realistic elements and then the the special effects. I actually I find it hard to pick which I prefer. I like doing green screen work because. For me, it's a, it's a very different style of acting. You kind of have to just use your imagination and uh, just kind of totally go wild. Like when you know, when you're like you're a kid and you're yeah. like you trick yourself into believing that there's a monster chasing you up the stairs. That's what you do. That's, and you kind of you actually kind of scare yourself, and that's a lot of fun because you never really get to do that in the real world. We're all too mature and sensible and serious and focused. Exactly. And I guess that's why you're an actor, right? When you started out at age seven. Yeah. So before we even get to that, though, I want to ask you, what is it like working with Eva? Because she is, as we were saying backstage, a goddess of unhuman-like proportions. Like, she's just ethereal. She is, and she actually <laughs> kind of felt that way on set. She has this aura around her, and uh, I mean, in the film, her character is, uh, I guess, like the mother to all these kids. Yeah, the governess, the protector. She's the protector, she's the guardian, so she had that kind of um, very protective feeling about her the entire time but at the same time she's kind of dangerous mm -hmm. and she's fierce and she'll do anything she can to save her kids and uh it was a it was a careful balance i guess for her to uh, her to do that but she nailed it did you guys know each other at all before filming nope i wish <laughs> <laughs> i think you're not alone there but you guys have such a connection on screen. Was there a rehearsal process or any kind of like Tim Burton boot camp that you went to before filming? Well, we had, we had rehearsals. Um, most of them were kind of like just getting into costume, making sure everyone look, kind of looked right. Uh, we didn't have much time to rehearse scenes beforehand. It was uh, once we got into the set. In fact, the first scene we did was the scene around the dinner table which actually really worked because in the scene, everyone is quite kind of tense and nervous. And uh, you're the newcomer. And I'm the newcomer, so there's this uh, sort of uh, tension in the, in the atmosphere. And that was apparent on set because it was the first day. Everyone's kind of uh, feeling around, making sure they're doing the right thing. A lot of these kids, it was their first film. So um, it, was, it was nice. It was a good place to start, actually. So were you like the elder statesman giving out advice to all these kids? You were like, um, no, stand here, there's your mark. This is how you say this line. No, I mean, they were all, they were all amazing, actually. They were all really mature, and they all um, really kind of took it in their stride. And, uh, I mean, they were younger, so, yeah, yeah, I guess they, they looked up to us in a sense, but there's a lot of respect given sort of uh, between actors, so we all, we all had our t moment to kind of shine, I guess. Does Tim Burton give you guys a ton of room to improvise? Um... Well, he's uh, he's a very collaborative director. He's always uh, he's always wanting to hear your ideas and your thoughts because kind of you're you are the character basically, so you you're going to understand them best. So he'll tell you his kind of thoughts about the scene and what what he thinks he's looking for. But if if there's something when you're rehearsing it or you're blocking it, if there's something that doesn't feel right or a line which feels like it's just totally out of place, uh, then you should tell him. And he's and he wants to hear it and he and he wants you to feel comfortable. And that's. That's really nice for an actor because having that trust between you and the, and the director is uh, really important. Now, we get a lot of actors up here, and you gen generally ask them, you know, do they have a short list of directors that they want to work with? And at the top of, I would say, roughly, I'm bad at math, but 80% of their list is Martin Scorsese, which you, work, you worked with him on Hugo. 
you're only 19, dude. Like, congratulations. You've worked with Emma Thompson. You've worked with Scorsese. You've worked with David Thewlis. What's your memory of being with uh, Marty, as I call him when we go out to dinner? Well, um, yeah, it's weird. I don't, I don't really think of it in that way. It's, it's not until I kind of, I'm working and I'm doing this kind of thing where I, I look back and go, oh, yeah, I, I, I did do that. That's, that's pretty cool. What is really cool? Um, I mean, when I'm at home, it's, it's very easy. It is very easy to forget and just kind of uh, behave very normally because it's quite separate kind of my work and uh, my life back at home. But yeah, Marty is, um, he's a hell of a man. I was, I was 13 when I, when I made that movie and every day he would be talking to me about cinema and film history and, and so much of the, that film is about the history of cinema. So that was, uh, it was a really educational experience for me. And he, and he, he speaks so fast that it's... He does. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll talk for hours and hours about the film and then he would give me like, uh, homework. <laughs> he would give me these old films to watch, which uh, which kind of inspired him to become a director. And I'd watch them, and then uh, over the weekend, I'd come back to work on Monday, and we'd be talking about this movie. It was it was really cool, actually. Like what kind of movies? He uh, he gave me, you know, Kurosawa, Akira Kurosawa. He gave me his entire box set and collection. Uh, I mean, he at the end of the shoot, he gave me literally hundreds. Hundreds of films, uh, which uh, which he wanted me to watch. I have not yet got around to watching them all. Sorry, Marty, but um, I'm getting there. <laughs> That's a lot of homework. That is. Yeah. What about working with Emma Thompson on Nanny McPhee Returns? She's one of my absolute favorites. Like she's she's like a, mm, just like a stellar lady. She is a wonderful human being. She, I, I, I haven't been able to work with her since, but I would love to. Um, and she actually gave me a piece of advice, which I've, I've stuck to to this day. I don't know whether it's just because I'm lazy or it's genuinely good advice, but she, she said to me, don't stand up if you can sit down, and then don't sit down if you can lie down. And that is great advice, because when you're on a film set, it's very easy to just kind of get caught up in the whole thing, and you're, you're moving all the time, and you're, there's not that much time off. And you really need to kind of take care of your body because that is your work, that is your craft, and you need to look after yourself. So it's uh, great advice there. I recommend you all live by it. Emma Thompson does no wrong. So she's like Oprah. Like, if she says it, it is so. And speaking of, you're only 19. You've, you've accomplished so much in the last 12 years. Why did you become an actor at such a young what, what compelled you at such a young age? Uh, well, I didn't. Starting up, uh, when I, I was growing up, I didn't even know what acting was. You started when you were seven, right? <laughs> I did. Well, I, my first film I did when I was 10, and I started going to this kind of drama class, uh, more not really to become an actor. My mom just wanted me to socialize more and get out of the house. She was like, yeah, go and make some friends. I was like, sure. And so I went there. I had, had some fun, I guess, and uh, a casting director saw me and wanted me to audition for a few things. One of them was a boy in the striped pajamas, which uh, I ended up getting. And uh, yeah, I think when you're that age, acting isn't really something you think about. It just comes very uh, naturally, at least it did for me. Um, you, you just kind of believe it and you just go along with it. And uh, I was having fun. I didn't have to go to school. It was, all the, That's all the a good bonus. Stuff. Yeah. And then it just kind of uh, snowballed from there. Yeah, it did. And then I, I did a couple more jobs. I got Hugo, which was the kind of <laughs> slap in the face, I guess, for me. thing. like, wait, I really should start taking this more seriously. <laughs> and, uh, so I, that's when I started to learn more about, I guess, the, the craft of acting and the process behind it. And uh, it's, a, it's a really rewarding job. Um, and I, I, I loved it. I still do love it. And just stood there on set, being surrounded by all these people who were literally the best in their individual kind of category, uh, was kind of mind-blowing. And uh, for then I just did it, and I loved it. And that's when I wanted to be an actor. What did you learn from this experience? This one? Yeah. <sighs> um, I mean, you learn kind of different things on all your jobs. Uh, on this one, I was kept really busy. I was, I was doing... I was when I was working on the film and uh, being on set, but at the same time I was doing my exams. So I was trying to balance all of my work, both from school as well as kind of learning my lines, knowing the scenes. So for me, one of the things I really learned was just kind of managing your time 
as, uh, as best you can. And uh, also, what I think is the most important thing in acting, just in general, and I learned this in all my films, is to not take it too seriously, to not take yourself too seriously and the, and the job, because you need to have fun and you need to have this uh, this energy about you and if you if you're kind of thinking of if you're thinking of it like work and you're kind of going to work and you don't really want to then you just have this kind of depressing feeling and then it brings down the whole film so you you have to just enjoy every day and treat it like it's your last now did you when you were on this set did did you how did you visualize this world that Tim had created was it through the book it was partially through the book, yeah. Um, whenever you have a book, there's especially in this one, because there are so many pictures and uh, kind of it was so visual, it really allowed me to kind of picture it in my head. And then Tim would always kind of show me his, his concept art and his ideas. He really wants the actor to have an understanding of what, what his vision is. And that's often quite hard because Tim's kind of... It's, he's, I feel like he's on a whole other plane to the rest of us. His brain works in amazing ways. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for us muggles to, to jump into that. So uh, he, tr he tries his best, um, but you never really know what to expect coming into it and watching the final product. And if you could, and I know I'm sure you've been asked this while promoting the movie, but would you ever want to go back in a time loop and relive something? Not forever, but maybe for a day or two. Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, there's some obvious days to pick. I mean, Christmas Day could be fun. I feel like you'd get sick of Christmas dinner after a few times. Um, I could go to Tokyo in a loop. It's like my cool. favorite place on Earth. So really? Uh, and there's so much to do there. I feel like you could spend a whole entire year living the same day and you wouldn't get bored just finding other stuff to do. That would be really cool, actually. Do you travel by yourself? I do now, yeah, um, ever since I turned 18 and my mum <laughs> got kicked off and she no longer, she no longer gets uh, ferried around with me, much to her dismay, but yeah, I'm, I go solo. And what do you want to do next? What do I want to do next? Um, well, I... Uh, now you just wrapped a movie. I did. I finished shooting something a couple months ago called The House of Tomorrow, which is an indie film. We're out in Minnesota <laughs> shooting. <laughs> You do really good accents, by the way. Thanks. A really good I'm, accent. My Minnesota accent's not that great. <laughs> but a general American, you kind, of, you kind of have to, as a British actor, you have to be able to do that. And uh, I would hope it's pretty good. I haven't done a British accent in a film in like five years. It's weird. I don't know why, but there we go. Well, I do have to say, your accent was so spot on in this movie that even in the emotional scenes, there, it didn't crack. Because you know a lot of times, that's the tell. Thanks, that means a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. No, really, it's a, I, I can't imagine speaking in a different accent for, what, three months, four months? Five months, yeah. Five months, yeah, uh, even more intense. <laughs> the, the job I just did, actually, The House of Tomorrow, I was, it was a four-week shoot, but I spent the entire time pretty much in an American accent. And when you're in America and you're surrounded by Americans, it's actually quite easy to kind of sink into it. And after a while, it becomes easier than doing my own accent. And so I found it hard to speak normally. And it took me about a week to regain my normal voice just because I kept like making my R's and my, my T's became D's. It all got a bit weird. Wow, this is, yeah, this is, this is like on a different plane. This is a Tim Burton plane right here. And to our audience, please. Hi, uh, I was just wondering, so you and the cast when making the film all seem to be pretty close. So like, what was your favorite story from when you were making the film? Uh, I mean, there's a few, <laughs> actually. Um, there was this one time Tim brought in a bunch of water guns to set. I don't think he really thought about it before he did it because all the kids got their hands on them and, uh, yeah, it all got kind of chaotic. I think we had to finish the day early then because everyone just got soaked. Uh, and there was another time uh, Tim, Tim had hurt his wrist. I'm not sure how, but he, he had it kind of bandaged up and he couldn't use his hand for about a week. <laughs> so he, he came up with the idea to attach this kind of rake slash claw thing and he just strapped it <laughs> to his arm and he'd walk around kind of like tapping people on the sh on the shoulder with this claw and I, he loved it i mean he, he did look like something out of a tim burton movie but uh, that was a good laugh i was about to say burton scissor hands but i guess that's not even that funny you know you're like no <laughs> <laughs> come on give me a courtesy laugh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> acting Next Good acting. Next question. Please. I was wondering, 
All right, do you have any interest in doing theater, whether on Broadway or the West End? Um, I've thought about it. I've had some theater scripts and uh, kind of projects come through. It's, it's always been quite a scary uh, thought to me. Theater. It's kind of daunting. I, I mean, I did it kind of in school mm. and uh, in just like smaller productions, but I've never been on a, on a proper stage. Uh, I think it's something I will do at some point once I, once I pluck up the courage. But for me, I, I really enjoy doing film. And I like that, because uh, I'm a photographer as well, so I like the kind of the whole process behind capturing things in the lens and using that as another sort of art form as well as the performance. But um, yeah, theater one day, hopefully. And last question, please. Hello. I wanted to know, when you were making um, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, were you aware, since you were so young, how deep and the movie would be in the historical context behind it? Um, I was aware to some degree. Um, I mean, as I guess anyone that age, we were kind of uh, naive to the, what actually went on, and we, we just, I just had the things I learned from in school. But I, I wasn't fully aware of the extent of what happened, for sure. And I think that that was actually quite important when uh, portraying the character and his innocence. And I didn't, I didn't fully understand it, and therefore that kind of carried across on film and in, in my character's uh, naivety and, uh, yeah, innocence. And when can we see Miss Peregrine? It comes out on Friday. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Oh, God. Yeah. Thank you so it. much. <laughs>